Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Outlands Royalty, a web-based interview show where the current king and queen of the Outlands interview past kings and queens of the Outlands to talk about their time upon the stag thrones and hear the stories from their reigns. I am your host, Bela Kosha of the Chippendales. I'm the current king of the Outlands. I'm very excited today to have as my guest, Duke Johan von Balduensek. Your Grace. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and tell tell the audience um, a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, my name is Duke Johan von Balduensek, as you said. I started in the SCA about uh, 1982 or so. And um, when I was, uh, my parents were, got into the SCA and uh, and I as and I was too young to start fighting, and and so I went to a few um, rebels, and then I went to a, a a war with my dad called Burrow Creek out in California, and I was a combat archer because they allowed that at the age of fifteen, and then um, my at at sixteen I was um, I was allowed to start heavy weapons fighting, and at the age of eighteen. I had won the Principality of the Allen's Coronet list. And um, shortly afterwards, I, um, so I was, I was invested at Midwinter. And shortly after that, I was, um, well, I guess uh, I've, I've been king like three times and I've always had a different, for every one of my concerts has been different. Um, my mother being the last one, my wife being the one before that, Duchess Catherine being the one, my first one, and then the Viscountess Andrea was my princess, and um, I enjoy my I enjoy fighting. Everything I do is just about is from is my love for the fighting. So, very cool. So, you were, as you said, you were the last prince of the Outlands. You were the second king. You're the second Duke of the Outlands. Um, you reigned three times early on in this kingdom's um, growth and, and birth as, as a kingdom. Um, while you were reigning during those times, were, was, it, was it conscious and was it, were you aware that your actions and your words and your deeds would set the tone and the culture for who and what we were as a kingdom in the moment? Or was that something that maybe later on someone kind of brought it to your attention and um, I, I, I think I knew about it, but I didn't really think about it too much. Um, about halfway through our, my reign as a, as Prince of the Outlands, the kingdom packet went through. And so we knew we were going to become a kingdom and, um, and, uh, so there was a, uh, there was a, a polling that got sent out to the populace with a bunch of different questions on it about different awards about um um let's see uh some customs and stuff and um and so we got the, that packet back and and um and we i pretty much went with most of what the populace had had uh, um pull, uh, agreed to i guess and um except for like they wanted they, they they said i should be allowed to fight in the first crown list and i went ahead and uh I didn't. I chose not to do that because I didn't really want the King of Aidenveld to have too much to do with the the Crown Tournament. I didn't want that to be too overshadowing, I guess. And I didn't want to leave it in their hands. And um, so I, I kept myself out and I fought the buys. Uh, but um, and then later on, as, as being king, the second king, the first time I was king. I realized that some of the stuff that I was going to do was going to be setting some customs and traditions uh, because the really the, the former king and queen, Gunvald and Nelson, they'd only touched on, they only said a few, a few things. And um, uh, some, some of them stayed and some of them didn't. But a lot of our stuff gets, is brought over straight up from Maidenville. So... I, yeah, I, I knew about it, but I didn't really think about it too much. Okay. 
<clears throat> so you had mentioned that during all of your reigns, you've had uh, a different consort um, for each one. So what would you say would, would be like, were the biggest differences from reign to reign because of that? Or um, Well, let's see. The first time when I was for, when I was Prince of the Outlands, my consort only went to like four events about, and she didn't even go to the stepping down because she was already a Viscountess. And that was my night's lady. And so I, I did a lot of it uh, with the help from my mom and, uh, and on my own. Um, and then the second time, my second reign where I was king, the first, uh, where my first reign as king, um, Catherine of Ivora was, was awesome as far as being a concert goes. And she handled a lot of the paperwork. I maintained the, 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 the king pen, which is, you know, the red pen. So I could X out whatever I want to, but, uh, we, we, and, I, and she was my roommate at the time. So we pretty much talked about just about everything that we were going to do. And, um, so that was, that was pretty easy as well. I mean, she arranged everything, travel, costumes, all of it. Um, and uh, if I didn't like something, then I would just say, no, I'm not, I don't want to do that or I'm not going to. And, and that, that was the end of it. Um, the second time I was king was with my wife, Layla. And um, so I was a little bit more experienced and I knew what we wanted to do. And she was, um, that was her first time. And so she was, uh, um, she was supportive, but she wasn't in the know of, of all of the different um, responsibilities that, that the queen had. And so um, sometimes it took a little convincing and prodding, but, you know, she got the job done. And then the third time was with my mom. And I, the whole reason I entered the crown list uh, um, was so that I could make my mom queen. And so I pretty much um, gave the reins over to her. And, and I was going to school at the time, so I was pretty busy. And so I, I, um, I said, whatever you want to do, we can do it, you know? Um, and, uh, cause I didn't really have an agenda. And, um, and so there was, uh, different situations with all the ladies, but I loved them all. And, and, um, and they were, they had their little differences, but for the most part, they were very similar. That had to have been an amazing feeling to be able to make your mom queen. It, it certainly it was. Um, I, uh, yeah, um, it was. It's, it was. It's a great thing. Um, at, I think at the time that it had not been done before for uh, somebody to make their mother queen, and so that I, um, I'm kind of happy about that and, and the reg and originality of that. And I was happy that I got to make her a queen at, at 25th year celebration. So. Um, right. Yeah, my brother was supposed to make her a duchess, but he passed away, and and so that hasn't been done yet. <laughs> well, there's still time. Uh, when COVID ends, we'll be having a crown tournament. So, right, make right. Sure, you can send a letter in if you want. No well, pressure. <laughs> well, well, thank you. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll I'll keep I'll take that under consideration. <laughs> Great. Um, so. Before you won your first crown, had you already been knighted, or were you still a squire when you won your first crown? When I won my first crown, I was not knighted, um, and uh, I was a squire when I before I had entered my the principality list, and I gave that back when I when I had won. So the time between the principality list and the crown list, I was. Uh, I was just uh, my own man, as it were. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I was knighted in between my first reign and my second reign. Okay. So you your first reign, you were unbelted, and then your last two, you were a member of the chivalry. That's correct. That's correct. What, what were the biggest differences between being unbelted and being a member of the chivalry for your reigns? <laughs> well, when I was, <laughs> when, uh, okay, I, I did, I did a couple of things that kept me from getting belted. Um, and, um, one of the things 
when I became king the first time, the 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 chivalry told me they, they didn't know if they could support me, and um, because I had uh, I had violated some rules and offended some people, and um, a, a a dear friend of mine, Sir Lavin, and um, I had uh, I had gotten wasted the, a, couple, a couple of weeks before that and and uh, this is a little bit difficult to talk about but um uh, I will talk about it so Sir Lavin and Kathan and I were going to become roommates and we were getting set ready set to do that and then Lavin backed out and then he also had um, at the time I was in the Crimson Company and he had uh, they were making a film and he didn't show up for one they rescheduled it on a night that we were throwing a revel and so it kind of like just uh, killed our rebel, and so I I was hammered and and I gone home. Kate and I went home and and I was pissed off and I urinated on Lavin's shield, which he left in my garage. Uh, so then that was pretty terrible the thing to do. So crown tournament came up and uh, I got called into the belted circle before the crown tournament and was uh, given a stern talking to about that. And the chivalry was expressed their displeasure with myself. Um, and so I won crown list. They just said that I, they didn't know if they could support me or not. And so I, I told them, well, I'm going to be king. And so you guys can just drop your chains at the door. You know, and I'll leave a box at the door and you can drop your chains there. And, and that'll be that. Um, it turns out that everything worked out fine. That, um, that we had a uh, Catherine and I had a good reign, and um, and and I gained back the support of the chivalry, I believe, because it was a because it was a good reign, and then got knighted the uh, within about a year or so after stepping down. Okay, so I mean, you how old were you at the time when that happened? I was pretty young. Um, I was like about, uh, oh, 21, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we all do stupid things when we're young and, and partying and doing stuff. Like I've, I know I did things in my past that, that people look back and go, wow, you did that? I'm like, yeah, I was, I was young and dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the things that we do, it, we have to live down for the rest of our lives. And uh, so it, that is a, it certainly was a bad decision. It was certainly um, made me strive to make, to come back to a place that I was, I could look myself again in the mirror and, and be happy about it. Um, and uh, I've certainly been apologetic to Sir Lavin for many, many years now. Um, I, I do hold his friendship with high regard and it was just a bad uh Oh, a, a bad decision during a drunken time. Um, so we live by our actions. Yeah, and I, everybody makes mistakes, right? Yeah, <clears throat> it's not the mistake that that you're held accountable for. It's it's how you um, atone for that mistake is what you're known for. And so um, I'm sure I can't speak for Lavin, but. Um, I hold him high, in high regard too. He is my champion, and he's only ever had great things to say about you. Lavin is a is a good, unique, special individual for sure. I mean, we we put that past us, and and uh, and um, and I'm very happy it's over with. But um, and then I'll continue to try to like you know redeem myself. I'm sure. For sure. So. As someone who's especially um, had made some mistakes in the past and, and won crown at an early age and, and, and done the job, you know, multiple times, what would be your piece of advice that you would give to someone that, that just won crown for the first time? Do not make any decisions on your own or in haste and take a, take um Take counsel with your peers and your advisors and um, 
and and try to make a decision that will that you can be happy with afterwards. You're not going to please everybody, but you can try and do the best for the kingdom. You're always going to be. You're not a king of any one little place. You're a kingdom of for the whole. You're a king for the whole kingdom, and so you want to take everybody's best interest in mind. That's really good advice. As as someone who sat the throne without, you know, with without being um, a peer, and then sat the throne as a peer, um, and what advice would you have for someone that? wasn't appear when they won. Would it be any different? No, it wouldn't. It would it would still be the same advice. Um I my squire was uh was unbelted or uh, not a member of the chivalry when he won. And um uh he did a fine job and I would I would uh the, the advice would stay the same. I mean, and that's good for advice for anybody, whether you're a peer or not a peer, is to Think about things and, and try not to do anything in haste. That's really good advice. When you say your squire, the one I assume you mean Duke Sirith? Yes, yes, Duke Sirith. Uh, yeah, Sirith was a good squire. He um, he was unbelted, um, and uh, um, and he did a fine job. I mean, uh, he's the Red Duke. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so you mentioned the Red Duke, and you are known – worldwide but especially in the islands as the black duke um how, what does that mean to you to be the black duke and and could you tell us a little bit about how the colors thing started from your perspective sure absolutely uh the, the name the, of the black duke is, is very much dear to my heart it, it very much embodies the the myself and and what i i'd like to stand for the um there's always some sort of dirty job out there that's got to be done. And for some reason or another, uh, I seem to be on the end of that for, you know, I can't really, I've always been someone that has to, to, um, to write some sort of wrong or so, but the colors for the, the, the ducal colors for our kingdom, which I, I think is very, very cool, very special because we are unique in our, in the SCA as far as kingdoms that do that. And, and it started when, Alvaron, being the melee a barony that it is, was looking for a new venue for having melees. And so they, um, and Arton had won a crown and I had won a crown. And um, they, uh, so they wanted to have a, a melee between Arton and myself. And we were at a, um, a fencing event. Um, and uh, and Vagen was the one that came up and said, "Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be cool if if we had that melee and you were the Black Duke and you were the White Duke?" And, uh, and I said, "Yeah, that sounds pretty cool." And um, and that see, so he's the one that came up with the idea. And then it um, and so we had that melee. And before that melee happened, Arton had won, and he was he had become he had beat me in the final round of a uh, of um, the crown list that Duke Christopher was the king of. And uh, so he was now the crown prince, and then I was still the Black Duke. And we had that melee, and I we were both members of the Crimson Company at, at one time or another at the same time, and uh, I should say. And so I ended up get, recruiting most of the Crimson Company to help me out, and we ended up winning that battle. And uh, the name kind of just stuck with stuck with me um people would still call me the black duke and uh they didn't really start spitting in, uh, after my name until after needham stepped up as baron and so he kind of like uh started that whole thing and, and that that really took off and helped cement um i guess uh my some, my infamy or, or or fame whichever you choose and um so uh afterwards i guess um Sirith became the red duke he, he well the first thing Sirith asked can i be the red duke and so i politely told him you know if you have to ask the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and he goes, well, okay, I'm not asking. <laughs> there you go. And so he became the Red Duke, and um, and then it took off from there. I was I was I I was gone for a, a few years, and I was surprised at how many uh, Dukes had followed suit and taking colors, or um, eventually running out of colors, um, taking other names that the adjectives that describe their their person, their persona, their core. So, um, but yeah, that's that's the story of how the how the. Uh, the Black Duke became the Black Duke. That's very cool. And I should say for all of our people watching, um, when members of the Outlands spit after saying the Black Duke, it is very much a turn, a, a um, endearing thing. It's it's done out of love and out of respect, and not out of disrespect in any way, shape, or form. So for those of you that, that don't know the tradition, it's it's very much an Outlands thing to say the Black Duke. Pua. And it's meant with love and respect because this man is a legend of our game and of our kingdom for sure. So I just want to clear that up before we keep going. I don't right. want to be wondering. <laughs> um, so Sirith was one of your squires and, and he won crown. Um, how many people from your lineage have, have been able to sit upon the, the stag thrones? He, he's the only one. I've, uh, I've only had a few squires. I haven't had that many. Um, and, but he's the only one that, that won a crown tournament and, uh, he knew he was going to be winning a crown tournament very early on. Um, he just, he just knew he would, he was destined for the, the, the title, the position. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> so we had a question that came in. Uh, I want to get in here before we continue on this from, uh, Alex Valharic. Colter wanted to know if you could supply your version of the Roga recipe. Oh, um, no. <laughs> Best answer. Right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, not being a member of the Crimson Company, I couldn't reveal it, all, all of the details, especially not the secret ingredient. Um, the, the answer is no. Good answer. Um, so when you won Crown... Were, were, did you win uh, fighting sword and shield every time, or were there different weapons forms? That's a really good question. Um, the first two times that I won a major list, I used uh, about half and half. I used half sword and shield and half madu and sword, depending upon my opponent. Um, and because uh, some guys are just susceptible to the inside thrust, and some some guys are susceptible to the wrap. And so I, I would pick the um, the the weapon system that that um, best suited my, me to fight them. So and then the last two I, I fought sword and shield. Um, but I, I learned fighting with the Madu from Surasadu Din, who brought the Madu into the SCA, and I was pretty proficient with it enough so enough to where I, I laid it down because it was uh, it was. It was a little bit easy. I wanted to hold myself back a little bit. I wanted to handicap myself, and so I used a sword and shield and a sword without a thruster for many years. And so that was – then after that, I used a heavier sword to even even further handicap myself. So it was all about making it a little bit more of a a, a little tougher of a game to, to play. For sure. Um, do you remember what format the tournaments were that you won a crown tournament? Um, yeah, they were. I, I'm, I'm gonna go on a limb there, but I believe that they were all two out of three double elimination. So pretty standard Allen's list type of thing. Yeah, yeah. What is your favorite format for Crown? Is would you say that's it, or is there a different format that you like? No, I I, I do like uh, I do like two out of three double elimination. You, you get um you get two out of three fights with the person, so you get. You, uh, you get the satisfaction of knowing that they didn't just drop a uh, a, um, uh, a lucky shot in on you. Um, it gives you a chance to to adapt to what they're doing because uh, every man is different on on any given day, and so it gives you a chance to 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 see what their what their game is. And you still and so you get three of those fights to and you have to win two of them. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And then you get two losses, um, and so that 
that gives the gives you a chance to even if you do lose one to put one uh, aside and keep going. And I like random draw. Um, it, I, I would I would add I would like the random draw to happen as long as and you can only have one you can have one draw or draw um one buy one buy excuse me that's what i mean you one buy until everybody has had one and then you can receive another buy to make it fair because there's it's been it's happened in the past where someone has gotten two buys and other people didn't get one yeah so, uh, i would i would stipulate that but two out of three double elimination is my fave i agree with that that's, that's my favorite as well and i i actually prefer um a step farther of best two out of three double limb weapon of choice like I want to know that when I'm fighting in that tournament that my opponents are using what they think is their absolute best style. Agreed. Agreed. Bring whatever you got. Soup soup can, whatever. <laughs> exactly. As long as it's not a shotgun, we're good. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So as as um going back a little bit, but as an, an early king, um, the second king and and the second duke. Were you able to, or, or did you create any awards, or did you start any traditions that you look back on now that you're really proud that we do things that way? Um, yeah, I, uh, I am. Um, a couple of things. Uh, I started the Cordon Royale. Awesome. Um, and that was for the king, uh, service to the king, personal service to the king, and uh, bestowed it upon uh, Sir Bertrand d'Avignon. The, the first time and then um, um, also uh, I established that we were going to be buffeting our knights when we elevated them um, and I gave my first buffet to Duke Arton at Estrella War um, and I, I, I did that in a fashion that I thought would set the precedent and um, so because the first night had not received a buffet at all. And I, I didn't think that a master of the society should be setting the standards by which we night, uh, by which we make nights. So, um, I, I thought that we would just, we would just go ahead and add the buffet. And I was pretty happy that that stuck around because it just didn't seem the same without that final blow. Um, I guess that was about the only two that I think I that I started. So, what kind of buffet was it? Did you was it an open hand slap? Was it a punch? Was it a punch to the shoulder? Uh, no, it was a closed fisted punch to the jaw, <clears throat> and uh, and our um, and our town uh, received the buffet like a man, and uh, he was knocked into the ranks of the knights about five rows back. And um, Sir Raymond the Quiet put his hand up and stopped him from going any further back, and straightened it back up. And he he uh, then he walked up to me and then he and he just uh, let's see, I forget what exactly what he yelled, but um, he gave me a biggest hug in the, that I've had in my life, and then and uh, and everything was okay. Uh, there were several people afterwards that were in shock and and wanted to hang me. Um, which uh, I could understand a little bit about it because nobody knew what kind of no, nobody knew it was coming. Um, Arton knew he, he was going to receive a buffet, he just didn't know how. Gotcha. And, um, and what Baron Gary was kind of pissed at me as well because he Ar she had bought a new helmet for Arton's knighting and that didn't quite fit anymore <laughs> because, he had, because his jaw was a little swollen. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. As, as King. You got you get to give out all the awards and you get to recognize people and that's really one of the coolest parts of the job. Um, was there an award in particular that you really looked forward to giving out that that you thought was extra special? Um, hmm. probably the Walker of the Way is a. Uh, I, I I always held that I always liked that award because it was it was different than a lion of, of some other kingdoms have. It was unique to what our um, to our own kingdom. 
um, and it's uh, I and it's only given out once per rain, if at all. And uh, so I I I thought that was probably one of our more special awards. Do you remember who the three people or, or the people that you elevated or made a walker were? No, I sure don't. <laughs> I mean, that's that's way too far back in the depths of my memory to remember. I understand that completely. I do agree, though, that the Walker is a very special award, and and that is that is very very much a um, unique to the Outlands Award, and also a very cool award. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you've reigned as both a winter rain and a summer rain. Is there, do you have a preference over one of those? And, and if so, what, why? I would say I liked the, um, well, I liked them both. I mean, but the, uh, I liked the being, I liked being king at Estrella back in the day, I should say, because uh, Estrella was, was uh, the best war in the land at the time. Uh, not the largest one, but it was the best one. Um, and um, gosh, they 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 both have their their good points. I mean, and uh, um, I would say probably oh, the summer rain. I like the campouts. I do. I enjoy those probably the most. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there? Uh, sorry. Um, what? What would you say it meant to you, or means to you, to be crown of the outlands? Um. Well, it it meant a very great deal. Uh, it meant a great. Um, I think that the outlands is a is a special kingdom um, in that uh, it's, it's people, it, the the populace of the king, kingdom of the islands is so, so loving and so special and so um, they're hard workers and they're forgiving. And um, so being king of the islands is, is, is pretty awesome. Um, they don't, there's not a lot of stigma about, um of how things were done uh how, the traditions that they just cannot be let go of uh the king's word is law which they really do support um whatever it may be that they're they're generally supportive of the king um and um and and everybody knows every it just it feels like everybody knows everybody in the kingdom of the islands even though it's a it's a fairly large kingdom uh, um, and, and a narrow kingdom, but uh, it, it seems like, because, and I think it's be, pro probably because the Kingdom of the Islands does a lot more camping than any other kingdom, to, do, to tell you the truth. Um, there's a lot of kingdoms that are based around one city or they're based around uh, a couple of cities, and so they do events like during the daytime and then they go home. And having the nighttime uh, fire campfires and, and belly dancing and, and camaraderie and telling us no shit there was stories and, and the shenanigans and stuff. I think that that makes the islands pretty darn special. So it means a lot to me. Absolutely. And you, you talked about the nightlife and, and the sitting around the fire and telling stories. And we just got a question that came in from uh, Countess Monica Von Zell. Um, what is your favorite Outlands war story? Huh? Um, let's see. Well, um, I, one of the ones I really like is when the Allens was at Australia war and it was the, I believe it was the first time we were at the, the war where it had changed to Schnepp farms. But, um, the scenarios were, uh, down in the, in the gravel pit and the, there was one where the scenario where we were outside of the castle and they were in, they were inside of the castle. And as, um, as we had, 
we were lined up and we were going to go and take the left, try to take the left uh, door, which was uh, a big opening, but it had like three or four of these huge mungus shields blocking it. So essentially it was kind of closed off and start, we start running into it and, um, and, uh, uh, we were going to just try to open it up with with uh, some spear play, and realizing that we didn't have a uh, we didn't have that many spears, <laughs> uh, I was like, well, let's just go ahead. And at the last second, as we're running to it, I said, let's just go ahead and hit it and charge. And so myself and and Jax and and Rorik, Loki, Morris, we slammed the shit, we slammed the hell out of this uh, out of this these uh, shields, and we felt them lean back and and start to falter. And so I yelled back once more, and so we uh, we hit it again really quick, like, and then that thing just like leveled, and it opened up this huge opening into this castle wall. We ended up winning that battle, and then the next battle was it reversed, where they were outside and we were on the inside of the castle, and um, uh, we also won that battle. But we had um, we had staggered like our some of our guys. Uh, um, Staggered them in front and then back, and then we had our shieldmen take a knee right off the bat in the beginning of this one port where I was at, and uh, and so they would try to run in in little groups, and they would be they'd get like siphoned through, and, and they'd be falling over some of our guys on their knees, and they'd be getting killed on the ground, and, and we just never they never really were able to punch through an opening in the castle, and so we won both sides of that castle, and uh, and that was let's see, and the other part of that. War, war stories uh in the battles before that they had this sort of like little mountain in the middle of the gravel pit it was kind of like an island but it sort of without water and uh we went the the brotherhood i should say um went around that cat that island it was a, a very narrow um a narrow corridor kind of windy and we were they sent uh they sent about like four or five different units of guys uh, and the first one had about like maybe five or six guys and they they met us into this um into this um this gateway and and uh and we crushed them and then we so we kept on pressing forward and we were the goal was to come to get through this thing come back out and around and then be able to get to Aidenveld from the backside we ended up going through like about five different units of guys and finally did actually make it through that opening and um but then they sent over a bunch of dudes to kind of stop us and, and put us down and and which and they did um so we never really made it to the back of the, their line to disrupt it but that was a that was pretty awesome um pretty awesome uh gosh i got a million of them to tell you the truth i mean there's <laughs> that that triggers other battles and other battles i mean um i like the battles were uh uh at astray war where where Countess Madigan had, had told me, you know, we were starting, so it seemed like we were losing a bridge battle. And she said, John, we need to go in there and, and do something. And, and, you know, um, so I, I had taken off my tavern and I ran into battle and, um, I was, uh, out in front of our line and I had a line of guys back in, behind me, but I was taking on their, their line in a bridge battle and they sent off, like they sent guys to try to kill me one at a time for about like three or four times in a row. And I, I, I killed those guys. Uh, then they sent guys out two at a time and I killed about three of those teams. And then they sent out guys three at a time and I killed out a couple of those. And then by that time they'd had enough and they went ahead and they just kind of mobbed me and pitched me over the end of the edge of the bridge. And uh, so that, but that was a, that was a pretty fun, exciting battle. I mean, I, um, it it helps to be brave when you know you've got a line full of warriors standing behind you. So, uh, I it was it was a good. That was probably one of my better, um, no shit there I was stories. So those are awesome, and I love that that picture of you, um, just standing out in front of everyone, on the bridge. Like the, I think I think is one that I put on the banner. Um, right, and that's I've seen you do that so many times growing up in the SEA and I was like always like one of these days I'm gonna get to be that guy and I'm gonna I'm gonna be out there in front of my unit and I'm gonna do my best to to make the out ones proud when I do. So um you are an inspiration to our fighters for sure. 
Well, typically, I like to be. I like to make a, a spearman some sort of. Uh, I like to give him a little bit of limelight because in in most of most melee battles, I'll take out my shield, and um, I can fight with a spear, but I prefer to take out my shield, and I prefer to be in the line in the trenches, and I'll, I'll grab any spearman and I'll tell them, you all you gotta do is stand in front, take all the shots you want, and if anybody tries to step uh, uh, step in or tries to pulse or run you down, I will flatten them. And um, and it, it's worked uh, for the most part. It, it works real well. It gives the spearman a lot of range, and then I'm and he's got me for backup. And so, um, it it's worked many times. Awesome. So as as king and as someone who sat on the thrones and and had the opportunity to handle all the kingdom regalia and use all of that thing, all of those things, is, is there a piece of regalia? That is your favorite and that, that means the most to you? Um well gosh, that's another tough one. Um uh, the first piece of regalia we've ever had was the Kingdom Axe. And so I I love the axe. I mean, we used to play some stupid axe games <laughs> with the axe. We would be drinking <laughs> we'd we'd be drinking pretty heavily at night and um, we would lay the axe down on the back of it so that the blade was facing up. And then you were. To, then uh, we took turns, and we would dive on the axe, and in a push-up position, and stop ourselves as close as we could with our chest to the axe blade. <laughs> kids don't try this at home. Uh, yeah, kids don't try this at home. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, our time was pretty good at it. Katha was pretty good at it. We all dove on the on the axe blade and just got this as close as we could. I think. I think it might have been like. Uh, Sir Nikolai that like stopped it, it just in between his chest pec muscles barely so it couldn't fall over back side you know, on either side and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I do love the axe. But um and I was the first one to get the sword even though I, we had not um been we got it before we were a kingdom and so Gumball got to hold the sword as king the first time, but I had it before he had it. So I'm kind of I like that one too, but probably Probably the, I, I think I like the, the signet ring for the crown, probably the best because uh, you could wear that just about anywhere and know that you're, you're, you're king of a, a special kingdom and, and nobody even has to know what the, the ring is about or maybe even see it because you might have it turned upside down. Um, and, um, and they were also nice and thick and, and heavy uh, signet rings. I understand they're different now, and I haven't seen those, but the first ones we had were pretty darn cool. The uh, uh, new ones are pretty much modeled exactly after the first ones. So okay. there, there are some minor differences in, in basically the band on the back. Mm -hmm. Other than that, they're almost identical to the originals. Okay, great. In, in shape and size. Yeah, so th those are and those are pretty awesome. I mean, um, I, I think I wore that thing like just about every day when I was king, I mean, um, so, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I do love the signet rings. So I, I'd say the signet rings are probably my most favorite. Very cool. Was, is there an event? If, if you think of Outlands, um, and Outlands history and traditions and things like that, is there a particular event that, that you can think of that to you is like, that's what the outlands is all about um yeah it, to me it was lonely mountain when we used to have lonely mountain up in the uh in uh in the Hamas mountains um i i love that event there would be times i'd go to the event and i would leave my armor at home on purpose because i would go there just to enjoy the site relax talk to the people um it was just it's a beautiful beautiful area um that i i i dig that event um i got rumbled into the brotherhood at that event um it's it, it's a it's this the site made it made everything to it um that yeah. is a beautiful site if that's to me that's probably the most beautiful SCAA site I've ever been to. 
for sure. Right. I, I, I do a lot. Of, I used to do a lot, do a lot of hunting there and stuff for elk. And so, I mean, I, I know that site. I know that that whole mountain like the back of my hand, really. So, very cool. Uh, yeah. Is there is there a tradition or um, a custom that we do that that you think, um, if if you had to pick one that you you know you thought encapsulated what the outlands was is there is there something like that that you think we do that that really shows the world who we are um i i really like what we do with our our baby nights chain a lot um everybody adds a link to that and it continues to grow but um and so it's a it's a huge symbol of of the uh of the knighthood fraternity that the Allens has um and uh so I, I really really like that um i like that we crown our successors um let's see I think that those are probably the two biggest ones that I liked. Very cool. Once you stepped down from, from raining, was there a, a piece of criticism or feedback that you received that, that stuck with you that, that kind of altered your view on things? No, not really. Not really. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I received too many criticisms in general. Um, well, it doesn't have to be a criticism, but was there was there a piece of advice or something that was given to you afterwards that that you then incorporated in in the next rain or something like that? Not that I can remember. Not that I can remember. Okay, if. Well, how would you want to be remembered as king from your time as king? What, what would what would be something that you would want to be remembered for? Um, I would like to be remembered as a uh, as a fun king, a king that liked to um, call children into court and reward them for uh, whatever types of things they were doing. I would like to be remembered as a fair king and um, um, and a, a level-headed king. There was only one time where I really lost uh, my um, lost my character and it's when uh, this one master from character called me a motherfucker in the middle of of a uh, of a uh, <laughs> of a battle where he had gotten excited he, he got hit he got excited he was a little too close to the battle was striking other um uh other fighters like with his staff and so i was trying to call him calm him down and call him back on that and he turned around and put his finger in my face and said listen motherfucker and so i kind of i, I banished him at the time <laughs> I mean, you know, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> no, she hit the showers. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so except for that, I mean, I've always tried to be calm and receptive to just about most ideas. So um, that, those are the few things I think I'd like to be remembered by. Well, those are very, very good things to be remembered for, for sure. If, if you, if you could go back and, and, live through one of your reigns again is there anything that you would like to do different or anything that you would like to change um let's see well uh, i guess I, I guess if i if i could i probably would let the second my my first time as crown um as king of the islands I put the thumbs down on fencing and I would probably allow that to happen if I could go back in time because it, it has added another dimension to the club and, uh, and the fencers are pretty fabulous as far as um, their, 
their fighting and their cleanliness and their respect towards another. Um, so I would probably allow fencing if I if I had a chance to go back and redo that. Awesome. So uh, if if you could um, pick someone to to reign right now in the Outlands, um, who would you most like to see? have the opportunity to serve the outlands as king and queen that's a very simple choice for me um i would like to see casca become the next king of the outlands and uh and and miss his uh, his lady um to be queen of the outlands i think that they would bring a new flavor uh of reigning to the kingdom um I think they're very happy, gener uh, generous, and cur cur courteous people, um, and uh, I, I, I think that they would also the islands would benefit from a lot of their experiences that they brought to, to this kingdom. So my my wholehearted choice is Casca. Well, I heartily second that. I think that's a great pick. <laughs> Those people are two of my absolute favorite humans on the planet and they are amazing in every aspect of the word and they do so much for the society in all aspects at all times um yeah i think they would be amazing yeah and i i, I mean i i really mean it when i say that the kingdom would benefit from having them be king and queen because sometimes it's the king and queen that benefit from being king and queen but uh, i think the kingdom would really benefit from um uh, having having them be become crowned they've got you know um they're they're imported they've got zero ties they don't have any favorites they they or they have favorites all over i should say and um so i think that they would be uh a, a really good addition to our 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 uh nobility and i think it'd be great to have costco become a duke um yeah, it's like I can see a bloody duke in our future. <laughs> I love it. That would be awesome. Um, so we had another question that came in uh, from, it looks like Raymond Elder. I'm not sure if that's a Monday name or an SEA name, but um, what out of kingdom wars have you attended and uh, which ones do you uh, enjoy the most? Um, I've attended Penzik Wars. Um, I've attended, um, I, once when I was king and once when Sirith was king. Um, I, we used to have a war with, uh, with Ans Diora called the funny war, which, uh, Marcus the Vintner and, uh, Johan Blau initiated, got it, that started. And, um, and then we used to have a war with Aidenveld where we had, um, oh, it was in one time. It was in uh, New Mexico, and one time it was in Colorado. But it was all. It was both. The both times I recall was in, in, uh, in the Outlands, and um, my favorite one though would probably be where we were fighting Aiden at in our own home homeland. Uh, one of those two, because. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed beating the hell out of Aiden Belt. I mean, for the longest time we were their shadow, and then we stepped out into our open, our own, and uh, and uh, so I, I I took a lot of pleasure in, in in just beating the crap out of Aiden Belt. I mean, I, I, the, pure and simple, the 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 um, relationship between Aiden Belt and the Outlands was not the same back then as it was now, and so. In fact, that's you know that's half the reason why we became a kingdom was because we were tired of the the uh, turnstile reigns, I guess if you will, um, and uh, and um, I mean we had probably half of the officers uh, from Maidenveld were from the Outlands, and uh, but then these other people were just taking the crown tournaments and having their way with it and. And a lot of the fun, and then the islands people were doing a lot of the work. And so, um, so when we became a kingdom, I took great pleasure in stomping Aidenveld to the ground. I mean, I, it's a uh, uh, so I'd have to probably say that that was 
Um, and, and we would feed them too. We'd invite them in, let, fight them and feed them. And then that would be, it was great. <laughs> um, so uh, those were probably my favorites. Our, our time was the, uh, Duke Arton was the, um, the autocrat, I believe for the first one of those that we did. And so, um, and that was up in Colorado and it, and it was a fabulous place. So that's very cool. Um, I totally just lost, I had a question. I totally lost it. Oh, I know what it is now. So as someone that, you know, you, you won your first crown at a, at a fairly young, young age and, and you had a lot of talent and skills. And I know uh, from having conversations with you elsewhere and, and, and watching other interviews, you you've helped get other guys over that hump and help them reach reach the goal of of winning crown and and things like that and i know you took uh, a break from the sca for a while and you're in your back now and, and you're more active are there times where you're sitting and watching crown tournament and you see some of these younger guys fighting and you see aspects of your fighting and what they're doing um Gosh, that's tough. It's 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 because because I, uh, when I was doing a lot of the fighting, I, I didn't really have a lot of videos of me, so it's kind of hard to see what I would look like when I was fighting. I mean, I felt fluid, but I really couldn't see any of the the live actions type stuff. Um, so, but I do watch. I do watch very much so the the fighting that goes on, and the, and I've watched a lot of the videos that have been out there and um and i would say that some stuff has changed but a lot of stuff hasn't changed i mean the speed that we fight in is still pretty much about the same um they're using a little bit of a lighter faster stick nowadays uh but when um um this is gonna sound kind of rough, but a little bit. But I watched some of the videos of the uh, past crown tournaments, and I've been a little bit disappointed in um, in I guess the the progress of the of of um, of the list, the mem uh, people in the list as as a whole, not it, anybody I want to single out. But I just thought that we would have more better fighters by now than before when, like when i was active um and i just uh i just haven't seen that and i, I think that there, I, i'm not sure if it's this if it's a wave across the 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 sca or not um because uh you'll you see like one or two guys come in and, and uh, in and onto their own but um but as a whole i i just haven't seen seen a a lot of good stick out there and i i i don't mean that in the bad in a bad way whatsoever i just i i thought i would see a lot more better fighters so i guess my my follow-up to that would be um and, and particularly with crown tournament would you think that that's maybe a, a side effect of kind of our culture of of not fighting in crown unless you're willing and wanting to win the job Absolutely, I know there's a lot of great fighters that actually just don't fight in crown. Uh, you know exactly. Uh, um, I I do think it's a mix of those of those two. The first one you hit on, which is uh, that we swear our intent to win, is keeps out a lot of uh, keeps a lot of people out um, because of um, um, it 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 be. It puts only the select few that want to be king into the crown tournament, and then uh, out of those, uh, which ones are are really really good uh, guys with an A game? Um, and then you have the other side of it, which you said, uh, which you brought up, which is a lot of those guys have, have been in the crown list and have won, and have don't because because of the way we swear our intent to win, they know that they're fully capable of winning, and so they keep themselves out of it. It's because they're not they don't want to be crowned at the time and so it, it makes it for a small list i um i would like to see them be larger lists and i'd like to see uh um more yeah i'd like to see the list larger i think that'd be only a good thing and um 
and I, I, I could I could live with us changing up on the uh, on on declaring an intent to win. Um, but I, I, the only problem is, is seeing that it's done it um, at, as a an act and and having people take advantage of that. That was that was the whole reason for us putting that in there was because other places had had a ducal prerogative where somebody goes through. He wins a bunch of fights, and then he's at the last second, the last minute, last fight, whatever. He takes his helmet off and declares himself not wanting to win crown, and therefore eliminating all these other guys and stuff like this. So, I, I could see both ways on it, um, but I, I, and I don't know what the answer is to making our list larger. Um, do you think? Do you think the island suffers because our lists aren't really big? No, no, I don't. I think that the people that do win are quality people. They're mature SCA characters, um, and they're they're fine candidates for the job. Um, so I don't think we suffer for it. I just think that it's it, it's uh, um, it's uh, no, I don't think we suffer for it at all. Actually, I mean, it's a fine show, the processional and um, the oaths and stuff like this. Um, it's just not a very long list, it seems to be. I can see that. And so this last fall, um, last fall, right after I won Crown Tournament, I had the opportunity to go to the West Kingdom for their Crown Tournament, their fall did, Crown Tournament. Did you enter? Um, no, because I had just won ours. So uh, I had planned on going to enter, but since I won Alan's crown, I, they wouldn't let me. Uh, okay. But so they had, I think it was a kind of small list for them. And I think they had upper eighties, low nineties or something like that. And it was a lot of fun and it was great, but it was also very obvious in watching the processional and watching how people carried each other themselves during the day that, you know, probably 50% of the people that were in the list weren't there trying to win as much as they were there to just put on armor and fight. And while having a big list is cool and everything, I've I've always been of the mind that I'd much rather have 24 guys that really want, want to be king fighting it out than 80 guys and only 24 guys really want to be king. Right, right. So – I can see, I can see both, right? I can see the yeah. pluses and the minuses, um, and and I I don't have an answer for how to make our list bigger without changing the oath, really either. Right. Um, but that, well, I mean, I, I, for, you know, we have we have a lot of tournaments, uh, Warlord. Um, we used to have the Queen's Champion tournament and things like that, where by the end of things, fewer and fewer people were entering because it came with a job and they didn't want to do it. Right. So, I mean, for a lot of the better fighters, I think that's kind of a problem with a lot of the, a, a lot of the bigger tournaments, bigger profile tournaments, they all seem to come with a job and most guys just want to fight and they don't want the job. Right. Right. How do we, <laughs> think, how do we fix that? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I think part of the thing is like a, a few reigns back, we changed it so that the Queens had a choice in the outlands and, right. And they can pick their champion now, but then if they pick their champion, we have a queen's favor tournament that doesn't come with a job, but the winner gets a cool favor from the queen, and it's a, a tournament to honor her, you know, to honor the new queen at coronation. Yeah, that, so, that sounds like a really, really good idea. That one sounds very worthy. I mean, who wouldn't want to fight for that? Right, and then something I started um, that I kind of hoped would catch on, and I've done it the last two times, and I'll do it this time too is. Um, I, a Heroes and Legends tournament at, Cor at Coronation as well. And it's basically to honor um, at, at the Coronation that I step up at um, to honor the, the guy that just stepped down, right? So I have a tournament based on what they are as a fighter. Like for when Jax stepped down and I followed him, it was a multi-weapons format tournament. And every round you had to change weapons. And it was really just an opportunity for people to come out and fight and have fun, but to also – tip my cap to Jax and the job that he's done as King and as warlord and, and, and being a hero in this kingdom. And so, uh, you know, this last reign, Johan uh, stepped down and I followed him. And so it was more uh, 
more period kind of tournament with sword and shield and kind of um, not as, you know, different weapon style, but I tried to try to format it more towards the guy that I'm trying to honor. And, and yeah, so I, I just think we need more opportunities like that where we can just have fun reasons for all of the top guys to come out and fight just because it's fun. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, there are some jobs that have to be done as well. And, and, and certainly they should be for the guys that want to do them. But having some other ones, uh, I love that one in Fighting for the Queen's Favor. I think that's a great one. Um, yeah, nothing but nothing but um, but uh, uh, fighting and, and getting recognized uh, by the Queen. That's a great one. Yeah. I also like what the, the West does uh, with their Roses uh, tournament. Yeah. I think that's a great idea also. Yeah, and actually, um, His Grace Hansa from the West, when he lived in the Outlands, he tried to bring the roses to one of our crowns, and like it just didn't go over well. I don't think it, I don't think it was presented very well mm. as to what it was. And then I was one of the guys that was like, "That's a horrible idea. Crown is about crown. Like, what are you, what are you doing? You're you're taking away from crown." And then, like I said, I was just at West Crown, and I I wasn't able to fight in their crown tournament, but I got to fight in the roses aspect of it, and. That was a ton of fun and it was it was a great thing and and it changed my eyes and my perspective on what that is and, and I can definitely see that being a cool thing to have in the outlands. Mm -hmm. So you guys we have gone over time. Um I I just want to stop and and take a moment to say, you know, you and I have, have not uh, like I've known you in the SEA, since I've been in the SEA, you are a legend. You are a hero in this kingdom when I started. And we've never really had the opportunities to sit down and talk like we're doing today. And that's what I've looked forward to the most since, since you agreed to come on the show is getting the opportunity to talk to you about these things and, and to hear your perspective on things. Because whether you know it or not, you are a hero and you are a legend to people like myself and, and people that have come after you in this kingdom. Um, you set the tone early on for what it means to be a king and what it means to be a knight and what it means to be an outlander. And you are one of my heroes. And, and I know I speak for a lot of people in this kingdom right now. Um, without people like you and Arton and Goonwald and, you know, the list is very long of all those guys in the first decade of us being a kingdom we wouldn't be what we are as a kingdom. And so I want to say thank you for all that you've done throughout the years for this kingdom and what you continue to do with teaching the new people and being there as a sounding board and being there to advise people on, on the right way and the wrong way and, and, and letting us make our mistakes. You know, you, you give us your advice and if we make our mistakes, you go, well, I tried. <laughs> so Absolutely. You got to keep trying. Never stop trying. So thank you for being on the show. Is there anything that you'd like to say before we close out? Yeah, I would, I would like to say thank you to your majesty for, uh, for providing this forum. And I'd like to thank you for your kind words. Um, and, uh, and I'd like to thank you for the job you've done as the king of the islands. Thank you. That means a lot coming from one of my heroes. That really, really means a lot. Thank you, Grace. Men with heart. Hope you have a, a great weekend, and I can't wait till this pandemic ends and we get to sit around a fire and tell some stories in person again. Right, right. I can't wait for that time, too. I mean, just when I started to get rolling again, this pandemic hits, and it's just like, you know, it's a shot in the foot. So I'm looking forward to getting it going again. Excellent. Me too. Thank you, Grace. Everyone else out there in, in – uh, Facebook land or wherever. Um, here's to when we can see each other again in person. Cheers. <laughs>